YouTube! I'm here again with another on-stream guide. We're gonna have a little discussion about the baby tur, imbaby tur lune. Daniel Hong imbibitor lu luna, imbibitor luna. Dill, D-H-I-L, dill pickle. Delete that from the, that's not gonna be in the in the guide. How do I title this guide? Ain't no way I'm spending 20 characters on his name, bro. Ah, I, whatever. Um, This guy's fabulous. Met expectations, feels great to play. If you are new to Honkai Star Rail and you want a daddy to invest in, here's your guy. He does all of those things. Wow. All right, let's go into this trial. You guys know how it is. So, Dan Hong in Bibiter Lune is a destruction character that was supposed to be Hunt, but the devs wanted him to get a hit more so he gets more energy generation. So he's not Hunt, even though he's literally a Hunt character that also has erudition traits because he does pseudo AoE damage. He also does massive single target damage. I don't know why he's destruction. That's fine. He gets hit more often. Basically, that's the only difference. He's like Ching Che, except five star. You don't need to gamble and your ultimate also gives you free resets basically his basic attack has four different forms and they are incredibly powerful they get much much stronger on each level it's not minor upgrades he gets quite significantly powerful and his ultimate grants the effect as you can see here of offsetting the consumption of skill points all right so now you guys know his technique the only thing it really serves to do is give him one extra ss stack that's literally it i mean it does have this nice thing of like he attacks all enemies and he blocks all incoming attacks but for the most part, you shouldn't be getting hit while you're in the map anyway. And if you are, then skill issue. But he does do AoE imaginary damage. It does give him one SS stack. We'll talk about this SS stack. This SS stack is basically a free skill point for him. Okay. Basic attack. There's four things. The easiest way to explain it, think of them as like the level of his basic attack. So he has four levels. We'll call the shitty one level zero. So this is level zero. Transcendence is level one. Divine Spear is level two. And, and Fulgrim Leaf is level three. The reason why I want level zero to be free first is because it's easy to see this this way level one uses one skill point level two uses two skill points and level three uses three skill points the idea behind the skill points is every single time he uses a skill point his auto becomes slightly stronger so it's pretty significant use one extra skill point the multiplier here doubles right it's from 90 to 234 you see this two hit three hit five hit seven hit we'll get into that later that's related to the other parts of his kit divine spear from level two and level three they get significantly stronger and they're also adding a little bit of aoe just like bald who hits targets next to the main target the same thing happens with dan hung's attack from here it's single target from here it's also pseudo aoe so attacks the left and the right unit which is nice seven hit five hit that's the extra part that deals additional damage. But the important thing is that the attacks increase and the multiplier scales pretty heavily. Level one is plus 144%. Two and three are plus 108% on top of that. So it gets even stronger, okay? Ideally, you want to be within two and three to get the pseudo AoE. But for the most part, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're using at least one skill point, because one skill point more than doubles the multiplier, then you're getting the damage off. And like in general, when you're building team comps around him, you should be able to achieve this because you want a skill point friendly composition for him because he's a hyper carry. Then we get into, let me see how I wanted to describe this. We should go over his skill. His skill is responsible for you enhancing the basic attack. So we had the level zero, the one, two, and three. The skill, the more you press it, the higher it goes. You press the skill once, he's level one. It's a skill twice, it's level two. In the UI, when you're doing this, by the way, you can at all times, you can press X and it'll reset all of it as if you did not press the skill, which is great because I think you guys know if you guys have played Ching Chia before and you press E on Ching Chia, your skill point's gone whether you like it or not. So it is a beneficial QOL thing that like it doesn't consume it right off the bat and instead waits for you to select how many you want before it actually consumes it. That's great. The bonus, you might think like, why would I need to level up the skill? So the skill is responsible for this crit damage stack, which now gets into play because we talk about the number of hits that he does. So after the fourth hit, so if you take a look at these, right? Level two and level three, he has a five hit and a seven hit. From the fourth hit onwards, he gets additional additional crit damage on the attack so basically it makes his attack deal more damage this is what scales with level so six percent at level one scaling at level eight is 10.5 percent crit damage at max of four stacks you can see that if you have a level two or level three then you can get upwards of like 40 
2% crit damage bonus on his attack, which is quite nice. Okay, moving on. Now we get into ultimate. Ultimate deals a decent chunk of damage, but you can see that the multiplier is much weaker than level two or level three. Level two is 342 single target. Level three is 450 single target, okay? Ultimate is 270, but has a higher AoE. This is only to the adjacent targets, so it's not true AoE, it's pseudo AoE, the same as his other kit, but it does give him two SS stacks, and it's possible to hold three of these. This basically means after he uses ultimate, he is guaranteed next basic attack to do at least a level two, if not a level three. So that's important. Ultimate is 140 energy cost, by the way, and that is very high. But the thing about his basic attack is that the higher level that you do with your basic attack, the more energy it regenerates. So in practice, you almost never have a problem with getting your ultimate up every three turns three turn ultimate rotation means you almost always get level two level three every three turns and then if you have a skill point friendly comp you can almost always have level two level three like every single turn usually level two though because level three requires three skill points which is kind of expensive okay last part is talent talent is basically free damage i don't know how else to describe it one stack of damage stacks up to six times during each hit from his basic attack for level zero you'll get one stack on the second hit Okay, level one, two, and three, you'll get one to six stacks. This changes with Adalons, which we'll get to. But for the most part, if you have Fulgrant Leap, that means that his seven hit attack will get an extra six times 8.7 damage percent, which is about 60%. So you get 60% extra damage on the last hit there. You also get 42% extra crit damage, which is really nice. Basically, this multiplier is kind of a lie. From testing, level one deals about one third the damage of level three. So Fulgrant Leap on average does three times the amount of damage as level one does. That's on average what you should expect. So it is very meaningful to use those skill points because you're basically tripling your damage. Does he seem skill point heavy? Absolutely which is why team compositions are not as flexible as you may think. He really, really wants a team that's skill point friendly. And one thing about him is that he's a hyper carry. So if you pull for him and if you want to invest in him, you should invest everything into him because he minimally scales on every single part of his kit, right? Every single part increases some part of his damage. And given that he's consuming skill points on almost all of them from your team, you should just be maxing out the abilities so that they give you the most value for each skill point. Does that make sense? Okay. Skill point order. As you guys saw from my Dan Hung, basic attack is number one first. And the reason is because the multiplier skills the best. All of his other abilities, you should be leveling, but before his basic attack. These ones give you damage bonus, but they skill very little each level. So they're not as impactful as the basic attack multiplier. Okay, that's it for his talents, right? Then we get to his traces. You're gonna activate all of them because each one has crit rate on them. Crit rate helps your build. This should be leveled. You should activate all of these. You should get all of the crit rate nodes. You get free 12%, 5.3, 2.7, and 4. Free 12% crit rate here. You also wanna get all the imaginary damage nodes. He's just a DPS character. That's just free, okay? One thing that you will notice about Dan Hung's ability, is he this guy gonna run at me? Well, one thing that you notice about Dan Hung's basic attack is it's ranged. If you see the red icon, that means you can hit them from that distance, okay? So I'm gonna pop his technique really quick. Leaping Dragon. And you'll see the... Can he go from this far? <laughs> wow, that's very far. Let's see him in battle. If you guys can see at the bottom left here, Dan Hung has these three little wave things. These are his Sacro Sanctum stacks. If they're highlighted, that means he has a stack. So we're gonna buff. Attack buff, nice. If I press E first, you notice that it uses this one here and it shows you that it's blinking red, that you're going to use it. If I click on E again, now it starts using the skill point. And maxed, you'll see two skill points will be used. His stack of sandin will be used. And if I press X, they're all reset. So we're just gonna do a max stack one. 72.5K damage is beautiful. The adds are dead. We're gonna ultimate here. 37k. So his basic attack is definitely much stronger. Now we have two SS stacks. We have two sussy stacks. Okay. For a showcase here, I'm going to do a level one auto attack. So you can see the damage difference. So this is level one before we did level three. Level one deals 25,000 damage. When we did level three, it did about 72.5k. It's not always a three times jump, 
but it usually will equate to about 300% difference in damage. 24.5k all the way to 72k. It's about three times. Okay, we're gonna buff him up. Uh, I'm gonna give him another set of benediction stacks. I'm gonna make him use all the skill points. The weakness break bar increases. He also gets more energy. We'll be the ult after this. Beautiful. 77,000 damage. Mara struck his heels. Okay, now we're gonna ultimate. Okay, 55k. Ah, that was, I think, the best demonstration we could have. So that is IL. He doesn't really have energy problems. He's just straight up strong overall. He's a really satisfying character. Skill point hungry, for sure. So now you guys can take a look at my Dan Hung. I'll show you guys right now. I have his signature weapon. We just went over his traces. I showed you 411 here, and I have the crit rate nodes unlocked. That's what you should have. Uh, relics, and we'll go through Aelons. Okay, destruction light cones. Brighter than the sun. This one's perfect for him. Here you have signature light cone. You have everything you ever need. He has free 18% crit rate, which goes up to 30% at S5. When he uses his basic attack, he gets attack percent and ERR. It's very strong for him because the ERR basically makes you not ever use an ERR rope. And he also gets damage bonus. And it can also double stack. So it's 20% energy regeneration rate and also 60% attack, which is nice. And you get free crit rate. In general, though, the thing about Dan Hung, he's attack scaling. He scales off of crit. Anything works. Anything that gives you attack percent damage bonus works. Obviously, there's going to be some that are better. Okay, don't use Balds. I guess that's one thing. Balds light cone sucks. The most light cone, please understand you only get two stacks of this because you can only use basic attack and ultimate. The skill does not attack enemies. Uh, a secret vow, always good, but you cannot guarantee the enemies have a higher current HP percentage because he doesn't consume his own HP. So you will only really get the 20 to 40% initial. It's still nice though. Under the blue sky, if he kills an enemy, he gets more crit rate. Not bad. I mean, gets more attack, more crit. It's fine. Wolf walk time. Attack and then increase their damage on uh, enemies affected with burn or bleed. Don't use this. Fall of an Eon. This one's not bad. You get 32% attack and S1. You can S5 this as well. If you do get a weakness break on the enemies, which does happen fairly often because Dan Hung rotates through his abilities quite easily, you get 20% increased damage. It's fine. Not bad to use. Uh, nowhere to run. This is the battle pass light cone. Personally, I don't really think you need this, but it's good for survivability. I think you just go raw damage because we have so many sustain characters now that it's like not necessary. So I think that Fall of the Eon looks the best to me because it is the most offensive and it does give him the most useful stats. So I would use this. Uh, second probably is Secret Val because the damage dealt is more valuable than attack percent. But could, because he can't get the second part of this, it's just worse than Fall of the Eon. Um, and then after that, Under the Blue Sky is actually probably decent if you're doing an AoE setting because he's strong enough to be able to utilize this, right? Under the Blue Sky, free crit rate, free attack percent. Guarantees you almost have 100% crit. And then Moles Welcome is just worse than that. So brighter than the sun, on the fall of an Eon, Secret Vow, Under the Blue Sky, Moles. Mutual Demise, no. Shattered Home, no. Collapsing Sky, this one's fine. Three-star weapon with 40% basic attack damage, it's pretty solid, that's what he uses. Uh, relics. Use Wastelander of Banditry Desert. If you do not have this, farm it. 10% crit rate and 20% crit damage is better than any other four piece that you're gonna get. Debuffed enemies, imaginary weakness enemies, that's fine. If you don't want to run four piece Wastelander, at least go two piece. And if you go two piece imaginary damage, then you can go two piece speed or two piece attack, it doesn't really matter. But this one's always, always, always best. Musketeer of Wild Weed is also pretty solid if you don't want to farm. Okay. Uh, the reason is because basic attack damage increase is perfect for him and you get 12% attack. It is strictly worse than the imaginary set because 20% crit damage is way more valuable and also 10% crit rate. But this one is a medium and you guys farm for this easily when doing weeklies. So this is almost always available without naturally farming. So that one's fine. I think those are the only two options, I would say. It's either imaginary set or musketeer or, or a combination between the two. Always works. Orb set. Brutal and Arena, 20% basic attack damage is very strong. It is the strongest form of DPS. Wearing, getting crit rate of 70% or higher is very, very easy. You have lots of ways to get it. In fact, Dan Hung IL is probably one of the characters that reaches 100% crit rate pretty effectively with signature light cone, with artifact stats, uh, with Yukong support. They're all very easy ways to hit high crit rate. Okay, so if you don't have Rudin Larina, Salsoto is okay. Probably the second best that you can do. The reason is because you want the crit, right? You want the crit. 50% ultimate damage. And if you really, really don't have anything else, you can go SSS. But SSS is just strictly worse because you're going to have a lot of attack buffs from your teammates. 
24% attack is fine though. Third best. The reason is because usually you're going to be pairing him with very skill point friendly supports. If you don't want to farm for another Sal Soto, I think that this one's also fine though, because this is actually used on a fair bit of DPS characters nowadays. We have Yan Ching. We also have Kafka. And you know, if you want to farm for multiple characters, you can do that. Main stats. I think the only point of contention is the boots. I personally like speed boots, but I think attack boots is also fine. However, crit damage always. It's it's very easy to over cap on crit rate for him. So you're going to go crit damage main stat on body piece. Orb is always going to be a magic damage bonus. And rope is always attack percent. ERR is extreme overkill. You don't need it. His own energy generation is really high. He almost never has a problem. If you pair him with popular supports, you also don't need assistance as well, like Ting Yun. Attack percent for sure, okay? How many of you guys run attack percent? I personally find speed to be valuable on every single character in the game. Speed is general. I see attack percent on like people who have more tuned teams which I think is perfectly valuable. And that is a good point that I see someone in chat mention. Ting Yun is one of the best supports, which we'll get to. If you use Dance, 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 Ting Yun, attack percent is actually quite strong and better than speed because Ting Yun's DDD will give you essentially the same amount of effective speed. It's not exact, it's about 10 lower, it's like 15%. But if your Ting Yun is super fast, then you will always have more turns for your entire team and you don't need speed. Okay, attack so I can build up skill points. That's also a good point. If you want to do that and your supports are super fast, you can do that. But I prefer to go speed because this means your ultimate is up more often. So it's a trade-off. Attack percent means your other characters auto more, for more skill points. But speed, I think, is overall more DPS because you're gaining more ult charges. You're able to ult more often in a fight. It's, it's either one, though. Totally up to you whether you do speed or attack. It's definitely your account focused. It's, it's really situational, okay? Uh, yeah, okay, recommended stats for Dan Hung. So, speed can be variable, 102 to 134, whatever you can get. Crit rate depends on the build that you have. If you are running with Yukong, you want under 70%. If you are not running with Yukong, and you're only running with Ting Yun, but you're running with the, the Wastelander set, basically 80 to 90 percent but anywhere over that is just over capping so you should really just go 80 percent right mine is nearing the cap there's a lot of free sources of crit rate by the way 12 percent from his traces eight percent from planetary ornaments 10 percent from artifact set 18 percent from light cone 25 ish percent from yukon there's lots of free crit rate sources for for dan hung so like he can get up to like 50 to 60 percent crit rate just for free so your crit rate should be high i mean it should be at least 50 percent and it should not go over 80 percent your crit damage should be at least 150 if not 200 percent 150 is i would i would say is like good like you should have 150 percent 200 percent is great it's excellent attack percent is whatever you can get always run an attack rope that is the only main stat that really matters if you are attack boots then you could hit 2.5k err stay at 100 percent. you don't need it okay he is more than good on his energy funneling um and i think that's it how much speed doesn't matter 102 to 134 it depends on your specific comp the faster if you're not running tuned comps this includes Dance 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 Ting Yun. This includes a specifically tuned Bronya. If you do that specific comp, you can run attack percent if you just want him to go slower. I don't know. Okay, Adalons then. Hoggers. As with most DPS characters, his early Adalons are super broken. Increase the stackable Righteous Heart count by four and gains one extra stack of Righteous Heart for each hit during an attack. So let's go back to this because you might be like, what the f is that? So Righteous Heart is from his talent which is free damage on like the more hits you do. That's why all of these have like the hits. Two hit, three hit, five hit, seven hit, right? So E1 changes Righteous Heart. Instead of one stack per hit up to six times, it becomes two stacks per hit up to 10 times. The damage bonus is from 30% at level one. Okay, it's obviously higher than that, but like just go at level one. 30% up to 50%. So it's a slight 20% damage bonus, which is nice. E2. I don't know why E2 is in the game. Dude, okay, like, E2 is literally a hunt Eidolon. 
nothing about this Ada Long is destruction. Okay, like I just want to let you know. E2 is after using his ultimate, he gets to go again immediately and he gets one extra SS. So basically, he gets a free level three because his ultimate gives him two first. If you use ultimate, he gains two SS. With E2, he goes again and then he gets plus one SS, which is three total SS. So you get a free level three without consuming skill points. And level three is a huge boost in DPS. It's like, it's like, it's pretty massive. Also, the great thing about E2, it also benefits his energy regeneration as well. He gets a free turn. And also, you can go attack percent boost instead if you're running this as well, right? Because you get a free level three, which effectively gives him like the energy back. It reduces his energy cost. It gives him more dps so it's just it's just broken okay e2 is just broken so e3 is skill and basic attack which is great because basically that's the only one that matters e4 outroar lasts until the end of dan hung's next turn so it is powerful this basically means that the crit damage bonus you get from this is permanent but at this stage of e2 you already delete everything so e4 just makes you delete more stuff but for the purposes of explaining it to you guys if you have a level 8 skill and you have e4 you basically have permanent 42 percent additional crit damage on all of his attacks which is strong uh most of the time when you're playing him and you don't have e4 his average crit damage buff will be like 15 to 20 because it only affects the last four hits and also it doesn't scale up until the last hit so it's like 15 percent average anyways e5 is uh, ultimate and talent is least important one e6 you can get 60 percent imaginary res penetration after allies use their ultimate you know how in simulated universe or like memory of chaos when you start out the fight with everyone's ultimate usually when you're about to do a big amount of damage you usually tune everyone's ultimate in a row and then nuke someone right this scales very well off of that type of play style it basically means that he just does like 50 40 to 50 percent more raw damage on his next s3 so e6 play style is this you use your three other teammates ultimate you get 60 percent res pen and then you use il's ultimate okay il's ultimate kills everything then you have e2 it bumps you up forward so you have three stacks of sss the next wave comes then you have 60 percent res pen you kill everything again you regenerate your energy and then you ult again on the next wave of enemies and you keep on repeating your ult and your auto that's what e6 does because you're so strong okay thumbs up why is this guy destruction does anyone know this is a hunt character but tankier you know i think the reason why they made him destruction was because if he was hunt then he could use some broken light cones team comps i don't know how to tell it to you but you're gonna need to clone your ting yun again i know we say that every single time a new dps character comes out but you need to clone your ting yun because she is literally perfect for dan hung attack bonus free energy and skill point friendly she E's once at the beginning of the turn, and then she autos two to three to four times, depending on the situation. And then Dan Hung has infinite ultimates, and yeah. That being said, let's continue with the other characters. We want characters that are skill point friendly. To make the most value out of your DHIL, you want all skill points to go to him because every single skill point that you give to Dan Hung is more valuable than you give to your other characters. I think that's the best way to describe it, to help you build him. Because you could argue like, no, he doesn't need that many skill points. But each one makes his abilities like significantly stronger. More than like the, la the last phase. So who's the best support then? Wow. Insane. Luocha's back. Why? Okay, so Luocha's broken. Why? So he has a free heal that doesn't require skill points. And then he has a talent which gives you a field that heals you for no skill points. So Luocha is definitely by far the most friendly support he's also imaginary which is same type which means that he can help break enemies he can help remove buffs as well that's kind of extra but yeah if you don't have luocha you just have to use whatever you have in honkai star rail the one spot that you can't remove is your sustain spot so there's nothing you can do about it if you have to use yepard you can use yepard it's not a big deal okay if you only have natasha then use natasha okay R7 is a little bit more passable and can synergize uniquely with Dan Hung if you want to use more of the recovery destruction light cones. Right, the light cones that like heal him if he gets attacked. R7 can help taunt him. He deals more damage. He gets more energy from getting attacked. You could do that. Bailu or Natasha. I think Bailu is almost always better if you don't need the debuff cleanse. And if you need the debuff cleanse, then you might as well use or pull a better character than Natasha. But yeah, you need one slot for that, okay? Who else is the other slot? There's two people that I think could work in either situation. It depends on how well invested your account is. I'll put them both on the screen to let you decide. The first one is our imaginary specific Harmony character. 
And the second one is this fucking character who has an emote that I literally will not remove from my screen. Every single time this character pops up, it's just Pella. I, I, whatever. The reason why is because Pella is very skill point friendly. You don't ever have to use her E. Her E's only purpose is to remove a buff. But if you do that, you might as well just put the Locha in your team and like you have that for free anyway. So Pella can just auto and then use the ensnare light cone to like death debuff. Or you could use the before tutorial mission for free energy and then just spam your ultimate over and over and over again. Ultimate is good because it's death shred. It gives Danhung more damage. Nice, okay? Yukong is the reverse case. I will preface this. You kind of need E6 Yukong and it's not really auto friendly. So the reason why I say this is because Yukong is not skill point friendly, but she can be if you don't use your E and only use your ult before Danhung goes. It's much more manual play, but you need E6 because E6 allows you to give a buff after you ult without using your E. And then you can use your E as an extra later on. So that's totally fine. Could use that. I would say Yukong's a little bit more tricky to play, but there is Mono Imaginary currently, which looks like this. There is the more F2P friendly comp, which looks like this. And you can just remove Luocha for Natasha, assuming your team doesn't die. Honestly, if you do this, your Danhong just to kill everything before they kill you. So yeah, just like be fine. Okay. Okay, after this, also a possibility for these two characters. Asta is pretty strong, but you do need Eidolons for her as well. Okay, because it provides attack buff, it provides universal speed buff. It's not auto friendly because auto with asta is her spamming her fucking e which you don't want because if you spam your e you have no skill points so you do asta is not auto friendly i'm just telling you right now don't do that okay welt is also not auto friendly because when you auto with well he spams his e however welt is very strong in a situational position where you need control if welt just autos and uses his ultimate right before dan hung uses his important abilities he sets them up for crazy damage. Mine doesn't anymore. Ask the autos a lot more. Oh, maybe they changed the AI. I don't know. All right, so what Adelon do you really need? I would say at least E4. And I think in general, Asta's E4 is the most broken for her because the 15% energy regeneration when she has two or more charge stacks basically allows you to ult every two to three turns, which is infinite speed buff. E6 is also nice. But that's just the attack buff. The charging and the attack buff is dependent on if the enemies have fire resistance. Because like if they don't have fire weakness, then you don't get double, double the, the thingy. You, you notice it gains one stack plus an extra stack if the enemy has fire weakness. That's not necessarily guaranteed because you only care if the enemies have imaginary weakness. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. Can you show an Asta build? Speed boots, ER, rope. The other two are whatever you want because her buffs are flat. They do not scale off of her stats. So do whatever you want. You can use Silver Wolf. Massive amounts of debuffing. Massive defense shred. You can force people to have imaginary weakness as well. Opinion on Bronya. No. While Bronya does give you huge buffs, good luck with your skill points. Bronya and uh, Dan Hung's skill point usage is 3 to 4 per turn. What about E1 Bronya? Isn't that one RNG based? It's 50% chance, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. If you're in simulated universe and you want to show off, you can do this, okay? You can be a one-shot wonder. No healer, all supports, giga damage Dan Hung. Bronya, I would say, is less valuable than Ting Yun or Pella just because she's typically very skill point hungry. Her buff is super strong, but it's a one-shot. It's not maintainable. This is going to be a pain to the Jing Yuan gamers, but if you have Jing Yuan, you really should not pull Dan Hung because she's going to take your girl. Okay, I don't know how else to describe it. Is Tingyun still usable at E0? Yes. Tingyun is just one of the best characters because even at E0, she does perfectly fine. E6 just makes her buff better. Like her gameplay is all there at E0. Let's open it up for a QA and a because I think I covered most, if not all of the things about Dan Hung. He's a hyper carry. You want skill points for him and he he's satisfying. Should I be leveling Pella? If you're F2P, you should 100% be leveling Pella because there is a perfect Lycon for her. This f***ing Lycon, man, is broken. This, this Lycon is actually way too broken on her. Oh, you guys want specific support synergies? Uh, yes to Planetary Rendezvous. Planetary Rendezvous, after entering battle with an ally, deals the same damage type as the Wheeler. Damage will increase by 24%. You should always have this on the specific Harmony character if they're the same type. Quick Pella build, please. Guys, this is a Dan Hung guy. What the fuck? I know ER Rope deals less damage, but I thought it could help him get more consistent for better SP management. Okay, ER Rope is possible, okay? It is possible. But I do not think it changes the rotation of his ultimate. I think the only thing that you would basically do is ERR rope is if you're trying to guarantee every two turns you ultimate. Well, that's about it. 
I think that not running an attack percent may lose you a lot of damage, but if you have a giga support lineup, then ER is fine. ER is not bad at all if you don't have an attack rope. I'm considering that I'm using a four star. I'm just like, whatever. So yeah. Attack boots and ER rope that. That's also fine. You can do attack boots, ER rope. That is just the, the less preferred build. I, I would not do that if it were me. Wouldn't it be good to ult every two turns for extra SP? It depends on how much damage you're gaining or you're losing. Because can you guarantee ulting every two turns? It's not guaranteed. So I would say this is how you should look at it. ERR rope, you need to figure out if it changes his build or not. I would say that you need an AoE group of mobs every single time. And you also need to get hit. Because what you need to do is you need at least 70 energy per turn to ult every two turns, right? E2 helps with this because it gives you a free turn. So it, it really depends on if your specific comp or your specific stats can match. If you have his Lycone as well, it also helps a lot because it does stack 12% energy regeneration because it stacks two times, which means with ERO, he has 136%, which means 70 energy goes down to about 45. 45 is totally doable. Speed threshold for his supports if he is on attack boots as fast as they can go, like literally as fast as they can go, like 160, 170 Tingy and Bronya. Is his Lycone worth going for? I'm going to give the de facto response. No signature five-star light cone is ever worth going for. But if you have the disposable income, might as well give it a shot. You never need his light cone, but it is his best. That's how the game is designed. All right, I think we're good. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed Dan Hung, IELTS guy. He's a very, very strong character. Skill point management is fine. If you're on manual, on auto, it's a little bit difficult. He's a great design. When I played him, I really liked his design. He doesn't have energy problems. He feels good to use. He's strong. If you're looking for a character that you want to have carry your entire team and you're newer to the game, I think he's a great option because he is exactly that. I like him a lot. He's a hyper carry for a reason. Skill points are a lot stronger used on him. That is what he's meant to do so go ahead and have fun you're gonna have to use tingan though okay uh don't forget to like and subscribe if you learned something and if you enjoy the format of this video let me know in the comments if you don't enjoy the format of this video well maybe we'll do some more old school guys but i personally like doing these on stream because they save me a lot of time i get to spend more time with my family uh thanks for watching i hope you like your new imaginary giga daddy who can fist i will stop do not call him dill pickle take care thanks for watching goodbye Wait, does he just do that over and over again? All right, Mr. Cope, add this in. What the f Look at the grace with which he executes his motion over and over and over and over. That's it. Balls.